Welcome everyone to this presentation of Microsoft OneNote, uh, setting up your own OneNote notebook. Uh, this is just going to be a brief tutorial about how to set up the OneNote notebook and a couple of the uh, major functions that I like to use for OneNote and a few of the advantages that OneNote has in managing uh, all the tough uh, tasks that you're going to have um, as a teacher this year or even as an administrator this year in managing uh, and developing your teachers. Uh, Microsoft OneNote is very helpful in keeping everything organized in one place and very digital and interactive. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you first how to uh, set up the notebook. Um, but before I do that, uh, before I get ahead of myself, let me actually open up the OneNote app, okay? Because I want to, kind of like a, a good teacher, I want to show you um, backwards how you're going to do this. Um, so first from the end product of um, why this is going to be an advantage to you, and then uh, some of the steps to get there. So this is actually the OneNote app that I'm opening up right now. And in this OneNote app, you're going to see uh, many different notebooks. So if you're just opening up your OneNote app for the first time, it's going to have your notebooks loaded. And I'm going to show you how you create those notebooks in a second. But let's just go to one of those notebooks. So over here, you see here are my different notebooks. Um, I have Futures Academy Planning, Grade 7 Planning, Phoenix Project, Entrepreneurship Project, Project Clean Water, uh, and etc. I'm going to open up Project Clean Water. Uh, because I think that this is really the, the best organized notebook that we had uh, and it really took a little bit of learning uh, to get it down uh, to this stage. So I'm opening up my Project Clean Water notebook and you notice here, here are my different sections. So I have inquiry and observation, investigation, creating, reiterating, communicating and exhibiting, um, and reflecting, project handouts, etc., etc. So we divided these up into the different sections, and you can divide this up into any sections you want. Um, say, for example, your teacher, you want to divide up in assignments, notes, homework, quizzes. Uh, you could do it that way. Uh, perhaps if you're an administrator and you're observing teachers and you want to keep things organized in that way, you might have these different sections represent the different grade levels. And then you can put your teacher's names here uh, on the pages in here. Um, and you can also share this. Uh, so what's great is once you share this, then um, you know the teachers that you're managing, if you're an administrator, or the students that you're working with, uh, they can access these assignments um, and these documents that you're putting in there. So it's really a great uh, collaborative tool uh, to keep things organized. So here are my different sections. And if you notice, here is where the main information goes for that particular section, okay? And this is on a page. So I'm on Geography of Beijing inside the Stage 1 in Korean Observation. So you might write a brief explanation, explain what the assignment's involving. And over here, you could put little uh, call-outs or little sections. You might want to put arrows over here. Perhaps there's some links that are helpful for you. Um, but this is very uh, helpful in terms of being able to create multiple uh, text boxes. Okay. Notice here you see some links. Um, if you go down to some of these uh, different tabs, or sorry, rather different pages, uh, you can see how you could put pictures in here pretty easily. Uh, you could put tables in here, um, pictures that you want to share with students, or perhaps pictures you want to share with teachers if you're observing them. Um, some different images as well. Um, there's data collections. Uh, there's tables. Um, so there's lots of different things that you can do in this. Okay, so this is a, really the end product what you're trying to get to. And it's going to take a while to get really organized with this, but let me minimize this, okay? So let me show you how you create this, okay? So again, this is going to be this presentation on how to set up your notebook. The first thing you want to do is you're going to come over here, um, and you're going to want to go to onedrive.live.com, okay? Don't worry about this other stuff that you're seeing here. Um, and you're going to want to go sign up for free, okay? I'm not going to take you through the whole sign up for free uh, process. Um, it's pretty quick in terms of signing up for an account. Um, if you have a school account, it will direct you towards that. I'm going to go to sign in here, and I go to sign in, and it says enter the email address of the account you want to sign into. So let's say you've created your account, okay? and I'm going to go to the account that I've created. So I click Kyle Wagner at Transform School, and I hit Next. And then it is going to take me into uh, the portal for me to log on. So I'm going to put my password in here. So once you sign up for your free account, Again, you can see here, no account, create one, so you can create one there. Okay, so we're going to say now once you've had your account, 
you're going to sign in. Okay, so I'm going to go sign in. And what it's initially is going to take me to is this is the interface uh, for OneDrive. And you notice here that we have uh, a lot of our different files here. Uh, you have you could, a new document you might want to do or you might want to upload things and it's going to keep it all here. Very similar kind of to Google Docs. But again, this presentation is not to familiarize you with all of the OneDrive features, uh, but mainly just to get you really with the notebook and feeling comfortable with that. So I see my apps here and I'm going to go to OneNote. Okay. So I go to OneNote and it's going to open up my OneNote and my notebooks. Notice here, this is where all my notebooks are. So I've created notebooks for my various projects. You even see I have a PD development notebook, um, really because that helps out with professional development. I like to keep track of what I've been learning. Uh, so I'm going to go to New Notebook. So I'm assuming you don't have any notebooks. So I'm going to hit New Notebook. And I'm going to call this, um, let's just say now, uh, that this is going to be my Identity Project notebook. Okay, maybe this is the first project I'm going to lead with students and it's all about finding their identity. So I'm going to call it Identity Project Notebook. I'm going to hit Create and it's then going to create that notebook. Okay, it's going to be very bare bones. Um, so it's going to create that notebook without any sections or without any tabs. And that's pretty much what we are going to do is we're going to load this notebook up with different sections and tabs. Okay, so it's thinking about loading that notebook. And notice how it pulls up this here, OneNote Online. Um, now we're going to start by doing this online, and then we're going to move it to the app, because the app's actually a lot easier to work with. So I'm going to add a section. Um, and let's just say my first section I want to do, uh, I feel comfortable with just putting an assignment section. So I hit Assignments. <clears throat> now I'm going to add another section. Let's say I call this my Notes. Okay. Um, maybe I want another section, so I'm going to hit Plus, and I'm going to call that Quizzes. Okay, so I'm setting this up as if maybe you're a classroom teacher. Okay, and then let's add another section, and maybe I might call this front loading. So perhaps there's a lot of different assignments or videos that you want students to watch, or uh, resources, or articles you want them to read before they come to class. So I have these different sections front loading, quizzes, notes, assignments. Again, you can add more sections, it's not a problem. But for now, let's just do those. So in my assignments, let's say I want to add a page. Okay. So um, under my assignments, I might put a page, I'll say week one. Sorry, let's go back to this one. I'm going to call this week one. Maybe this one's week two. Okay, now I'm only going to do a couple because you could do this inside the app. Uh, but I like to just always start by just putting my sections into my notebook here. Okay, then I'm going to actually go to my OneNote app. Now I can't go to the OneNote app here. Um, you first have to download it. Okay, I already have it, but you want to go go up here to go edit in OneNote. So I'm going to hit edit in OneNote and it says launch application. Yes, I'm going to say that's okay, launch application. And now as you notice, it takes me directly to my OneNote app. Remember this is the Project Clean Water notebook that I was just showing you. It's popping that thing up and it's thinking, it's thinking, and now it's going to open up uh, the notebook that we have just created. Okay, so the Identity Project Notebook, it's going to sync those changes so that anything you do online appears here. Okay, and notice for now on, really, I'm going to work in this app because it's really a lot more user friendly. I don't have to log in all the time. Sometimes there's connectivity problem. Um, things don't sync very quickly. So you know how it goes. <laughs> it never, nothing ever works perfectly. So I'm going to go to my quick notes that I just created. Okay. And let's say quick notes, we're going to do a, uh, a lesson perhaps. Um, and this is going to be one of the lessons to really help them to understand what identity is. And perhaps um, I'm going to do a lesson on primary and secondary sources. Okay, so I might call this primary and secondary sources in notes. And I might say, um, say description. Okay, now let's say yada yada yada, I can write a description in here. Okay about what that is. So I write a description of it. Now notice how if I click on other parts of this, okay, it's not part of the same text box. It's new text boxes. So I might talk about primary secondary sources and then I might have a really cool video. So I'm going to say watch this video here. Alright, I'm going to highlight that and now you can do a couple things. Um, you can insert the video directly uh, through here at the insert tab or you can link it. So a lot of times I like to link it 
So I go to link here and I might say www.youtube and I found a really cool video on primary sources. Okay, so once you pull that link, you're gonna wanna copy that link and then now it's available. So you might tell kids, hey, watch this video here. They'll be able to click that, that'll go to YouTube. Now, this, I really like this feature. This is the audio recording. So let's say you wanna give a little preface to primary and secondary sources, okay? So you might have um, a recording that you want to do or you found a recording and you're going to hit audio recording here. Now notice how it's recording right now. You notice it's recording. So I could say, welcome students. Hope you're having a wonderful day today. Uh, I'm really excited to get started on this identity project. Now the first thing we're going to do is we got to find out what are primary and secondary sources. So I've got a task for you. It's a little scavenger hunt. You're going to go home and try to find at least two primary and two secondary sources about your identity. That means talking to parents, that's a primary source to find out a little bit more about you and your background because they were there at the time. And maybe a secondary source. Maybe there's been something that's been written about you. Okay, so notice how I am actually recording right now. I hit stop. That becomes an audio recording for the students. So now they've got a video on primary and secondary sources. They've got an audio recording and they got a little description of the assignment. So you could do lots of things. We really like to do um, rubrics as well. So sometimes we go to insert table and I insert a table in here. Um, notice how it's inserting that in the same text box. So I'm gonna go over here and go insert table. And let's say you wanna do rubrics, right? Emerging, approaching, okay? You know, you know the drill, right? Meaning, exceeding. And you wanna define, hey, on this particular assignment, this is what it's going to take to get an emerging, approaching, mean, or exceeding. This is what I'm expecting in terms of this assignment. Okay, really cool features. Um, you can do the draw feature where you can draw things in here in the notebook for students. You can insert. Um, sometimes I like to insert a PDF uh, printout rather than just the file because it'll print it out and put it there. So let's say you found a really good resource about two or three pages. Maybe it's a wiki. Um, on what are the difference between primary and secondary sources, you can insert that directly into your document. So it's really cool um, and really useful. Okay, um, the only other thing I was going to mention is uh, what I like to do sometimes is there's a to-do list. So maybe you want to put a to-do list, uh, a checklist for kids. Um, this is really helpful at the beginning of a project where you say here are the different tasks, here are your to-do list. Okay, so you might even add a page and say to-do list um, this week and quick notes and you can list all those things out so you could put a little box and say first interview parents um, you know second is to listen to interview and transcribe okay something like that now if you're administrator um, again you could transfer these kind of skills directly into your management of teachers and management of watching classrooms okay you could put to-do lists in for um, your teachers as well um, you could put resources let's say that they're working on um, doing the anticipatory set for a lesson well you could put some videos and some tutorials and training guides for your teachers it's really helpful and you can manage them over here you can have all of your teachers in here um, and have your different grade levels perhaps up here. It's just a really good management tool. And once you've shared that with your teachers, you can set the permissions. So you can share certain things with certain teachers. You don't have to share the entire notebook, okay? But that's gonna be Microsoft OneNote mm, 102. This is very basic. So this is Microsoft OneNote Notebook 101. Um, I hope you enjoyed this brief tutorial. Um, if you're interested in finding out more and you wanna know more how it works, I say the best thing to do is just to dive in but don't be uh, afraid to just shoot me an email uh, at kylewagner at transformschool.com and I'll be able to help hopefully answer some of your questions and chat a little bit um, about how I um, bring tools uh, like this and help um, you as an administrator or as a teacher to get more comfortable with using these so it can really transform student learning because we really want tech to be more than just a tool. We want it to transform student learning. Okay. So hopefully you enjoyed that tutorial. Again, shoot me any questions that you have, and you have yourself a wonderful day.